more now on China's decision to relax the peg of the yuan to the dollar. What impact can we expect on the U.S. economy? Joining us now, University of Maryland economics professor Peter Morisi. He is a former chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission and also served as an economist at the Energy Department. Professor Morisi, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. Nice to be with you. Professor, let me ask you a question that I just asked our economics editor, Michael McKee, before the break. Because of this news that we have heard today, has China succeeded in removing this topic from debate at the upcoming G20 summit? I think it depends on who you ask. I think if you ask Tim Geithner, he'd probably say yes. However, uh, if you ask other folks who are more experienced about China and are more savvy about what's going on, they'd say no. You know, the underlying value of China's currency goes up by about five or six points a year because of productivity growth accomplished through modernization. Their productivity growth rate is, you know, close to 9% a year. Ours is at three. And that's okay. And so, you know, a program that increases the value of the currency by 5% actually loses ground right. on this 40 or 50% undervalued. Valuation. That's why we made no progress last time. The yuan actually increased by 17.5%. The Treasury Department engaged in new mathematics to come up with 21%, and the press has grabbed onto that right. uh, because, because they didn't want to call it a manipulator. And what the heck difference between 18 and 21, I don't know. But they did. The reality is that the impact on prices is not enough right. unless we have a fundamental revaluation, 40 or 50 or 60%. Well, professor, now, professor, may I ask, though, is, is this more a sense of, of what our Peter Cook had uh, reported earlier, that the White House uh, seeming to think that this is a result of quiet behind the scenes diplomacy or did this more have to do with the internal dealings in China and what perhaps uh, Wen Jiabao and Hu Jintao had to deal with in their own government? Well, you know, the two governments are alike and they're different. The American government does believe the exchange rate matters and that changing it enough would change the trade deficit. The Chinese government doesn't believe that. But both governments do believe that this pegged exchange rate is causing inflation in China. What the Chinese don't realize is that by only revaluing 5% a year, they will not escape that problem. Because what causes the inflation are all the dollars, all the yuan they print to buy dollars. And if they don't revalue by very much, they have to continue intervening that way. Those yuan come back into their economy and cause inflation. China won't escape its fundamental problem by doing this, but they don't really care to understand or learn about it. They have a very closed mind. Well, but it doesn't seem like we're not going to get a 40 or 50 percent revaluation. So barring That's that. Right. So barring that, I mean, what does this, I mean, we don't even know if it's going to be 5%, do we? I mean, this is right. just a, right now, these are just well, estimates. D does what China's announcing achieve anything, in your view? It's a meaningless act, other than to basically take the pressure off them for the G20 conference and give President Obama some political breathing room. See, at the end of the day, I don't know that President Obama really gives a tinker's damn about manufacturing in the United States. His manufacturing strategy is the work of sophomores. His whole emphasis is on these new industries and so forth, which is all very nice. But, you know, I'll tell you a story. When I was growing up in New York City in the 50s, we still had horses on the street. Yes, horses. Why? Old technologies last a long time after new technologies come along. We're going to be driving with gas. We're going to need machine tools and steel for a long time. And if we don't make those industries work, this economy is not going to function very well. And if we don't revalue the dollar uh, against the yuan, that's not going to happen. But Obama doesn't see that any more than the Chinese don't see their inflation problem. Oh, right. Listen to the things that come out of Geithner's mouth when it comes to currency. It is hard to discern anything you haven't read in the New York Times a few weeks before. But, okay, Professor, given that as a backdrop, then, 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 then what's the U.S. alternative? Legislation to levy tariffs on Chinese imports? Ah, now the second level of hypocrisy. Let's take the onion apart a little bit more. You know, Chuck Schumer likes to tell you that he is a real patron of manufacturing because, after all, he needs a lot of votes in that Mohawk Valley from Albany, but especially Syracuse, on west to Buffalo. And there are a lot of manufacturers there that want something done. I've spoken to the central manufacturers up there, spoken at a couple of their conferences, been keynote speakers. And, you know, there's always a video addressed from the senator about how important this is. But Senator Schumer also gets lots of money from Wall Street, where they don't want anything confrontational done with regard to China, 
because they want to basically expand American banking in China once we get through this crisis. See, they're not much interested in competing with imports as they are in establishing in China. So they don't want to disrupt relations with Beijing, and they don't want anything to happen. So this announcement today gives Chuck Schumer a chance to say, I'm going to watch this very closely. But you watch. Once again, there'll be no vote on his bill. Chuck Schumer is a master at sounding tough, and then there's no vote on his bill. The last time around, when he had a chance to get a vote twice, he passed it up. Right. You watch. There'll be no vote. Chuck Schumer talks a good game, <laughs> but he plays very poorly. Peter Morisi is the University of Maryland economics professor talking the Chinese yuan and politics. Professor Morisi, always good to have you on. Thanks. Nice to be with you.